Want to know how to do this on your iPad or Canvas? Keep watching! This is Shelly Hanna. Welcome to my very first iPad painting tutorial. I'll be showing you my approach for painting on the iPad using ArtRage, my favorite painting app. I use very traditional painting techniques, so if you don't have an iPad, grab your paintbrushes and follow along. I've created a lot of step-by-step -step painting tutorials which can be found on my website ShellyHannaFineArt.com. I'll have links in the description below if you'd like to check them out after the video. And since I'm just getting started here, I'd love for you to give this video a like and hit the subscribe button below along with the little bell next to it if you'd like to be notified for future videos. One of the things I like about ArtRage is that you can have a reference photo handy so you can see I go to References, Import from Photo Library, and then go to My Photos and just position this picture of Tippy the Cat into place. So now I'm going to attempt to delete it out of here, and I think I had to do it a couple times before I made it go away. I don't know what my problem was there. I had already completed the painting of Tippy before I got this idea to do this video, so I'm actually going back and recreating this from scratch. So I'm selecting my pencil tool and I'm just going to show you how you can sketch in the picture of Tippy, selecting a color there, going back, and I think I accidentally hit the canvas and it changed the color, which happens to me a lot for some reason. So I go back, I get kind of a dark brown color. If you like to draw and want to practice your drawing skills, you can use a method called the site size method where I've got the picture of Tippy set up to the left and I'm just putting in some key points here and starting a drawing this way. And I have a more detailed tutorial on my website about using the site size method. If you want to go there and follow that step by step, it's a portrait of a person but I'll have that link below in the comments if you would like to know how to do that. For this video, I am not going to complete this. I'm going to also show you how to do um, the tracing feature. So you can see I'm backing out of here. I'm using the undo on the iPad. And now I'm loading in the picture of Tippy into the tracing feature on Art Rage. And so there you go. There's the picture and it's kind of grayed out as you can see. You don't have to get too detailed with your drawing because you're basically going to be painting over it. So and here I'm not even going to try to draw this. I've done it already. So what you're going to see here is a really really terrible drawing. And I'll be taking away the picture here so you can see how bad my drawing is. There it is. It's looking really good. Next, I'm going to be going over some screenshots of my original painting that I did. You can see how loose my sketch is here. It's a little closer view. Whether I'm painting on canvas or painting on the iPad, generally I will say always paint from dark to light. When you get your dark values in first, it can help you to establish a better structure or foundation for your painting. Here we are back at the screencast of the painting and you can see my brush tool there that I've just selected. And I keep it, it's an oil brush. I keep the pressure pretty high, the loading almost 100%. And they're just vary the size, so it's very simple. And then again, starting with darks, and this will be a pattern that I repeat. You just start with the darks start outlining the areas. This is a reboot of this painting. Originally when I did this tutorial, it was only for my website. So I tried to export this as one of the ArtRage files out of the iPad into ArtRage for the desktop, but for some reason it always fails for me. And I should show the failed export because it's pretty hilarious, but um, probably won't do that here. But as you can see, I'm starting to go into a speed painting. Otherwise, we'd be here for about five hours watching me paint 
Originally I was just going to do the eye tutorial because I was just going to show that part, but I started to paint other parts of this as well so you could see a little bit of the fur and, and some other areas. Here you can see I'm getting some of the greens in there. Um, once you get the, the black parts in there, or the darker areas, it's, it really starts to look like something. Are you a painter and have you tried a digital program? Let me know in the comments below. Here I'm blowing up a little bit so you can see what I'm doing grabbing the blending tool. And for the blending tool, I always just blend color. And there you can see I'm just going in and blending that out a little bit and just using a really light touch. So what I'm doing here is I'm, this is a trick that I use all the time where I make things small. When you do that, it's kind of like squinting and it really helps you to see the values. For some reason, I don't have the screencast where I started to add in the complementary color, but if you look to the right, you can see a little swatch of a gray-blue color, and you can see where I started to add that in around the eye. And the reason why I like to do that is because I like adding subtle complementary colors into my paintings. And since there's a lot of golden colors in the fur around the eye, the blue tones are a very nice complementary color. These colors vibrate optically and make your painting feel more alive. Now you'll notice that I'm really loading paint in quite aggressively here, um, putting in a lot of the dark tones and not being too careful about what I'm doing. Of course, I'm not really painting this fast in real life. I am making things darker than what you're seeing on the left hand side in the photo and that's because Tippy has a lot of ticking and so you need to have that base dark color so you can go back in and add in the lighter tones of brown in there. And you'll see me going back and forth and blending things around and going back in and you know it's just a process of going back and forth until you get something that you're happy with. Right now it's what I call the messy middle. Some people call it painting ugly. It's that stage in the painting where, you know, it just looks like a, a total mess and you don't know if your painting is going to fail, if you should continue painting it because it's just looking so bad. Um, that's why a lot of times I'll have one part of the painting that'll have pretty finish, like what you see on the eye there. Um, I did go back and paint this in a completely different way than I had originally painted. Uh, I thought I was only going to paint the eye for you guys, then I just kept on going and so, you know, there are many different ways to approach a painting and none of them are wrong as long as they're working for you. When I get close to finishing my work, again, I make my painting small. If I'm painting on a real life canvas, I'll take a picture with my phone and check my painting very small on my phone. And what this does is help to check the values to see if the values are correct. Again, this is like squinting when you're looking at your painting to check the values. And you can see, oh, maybe you can see, I'm outlining some areas in magenta where I need to lighten the value on the painting. And here I'm bringing it back up and getting my brush so that I can add in some more gold paint and lighten those areas that I had just outlined. Here we are back at the original painting that I had done of Tippy and I'm just going through a few of the original screenshots from my tutorial on my website. And in the lower left corner of the painting you can see I have some swatches and I was adding in complementary colors towards the end there. And notice on Tippy's neck in the white areas I've kept things really loose and brushy. I like having loose brush strokes because I feel like it adds a lot of energy to the painting and I like to keep it loose and messy sometimes. 
here I am checking again it on a small size and then on a larger size, making sure my values and proportions are correct. If you've enjoyed this video, please check out my website for more tutorials and stop by my social media channels to say hi. I'd love to hear from you. I've left links for them in the notes below. Please like and subscribe and let me know if you'd like to see more videos by leaving a comment. Thank you for watching.